things should be kept in mind while planning for selection of optional papers. Some candidates are suggested by their mentors. Some people have a peculiar inclination to particular subjects, some like philosophy, some like political science, some like international relations. And some candidates uh, select uh, optional papers keeping in view their educational background. Like if you have done masters in political science, if you have done masters in international relations, if you have done masters in English literature, if you have done MBBS, if you have done engineering, you try to go to the subjects which are very close to your heart and it is a good decision. <laughs>
what a pc guy do is that they try to target this paper in the next year and uh, punish the candidates and try to keep it a low scoring paper you have to understand this trend also this trend happens in many subjects any paper any optional paper that is being selected by majority of the candidates is targeted by fpsc and the coming year in the next year in the next exam it is deliberately kept low and fpsc tries to discourage by this way by keeping low score for optional and if you obtain low score if you get low score even if you work a lot even if you invest your day and night in study of a particular subject but ultimately you suffer and your aggregate or your allocation is badly affected because of such decisions so decision of optional papers is very critical however what is the way forward how can you how would you plan how would you counter these strategies these issues in order to secure more marks and get uh, allocation to the group of your choice best strategy is that you must depend on one optional paper one optional paper should be the strongest than rest of the papers it must be high scoring and you must do entire work on that particular paper because there are twelve papers and you cannot balance all the papers sometimes uh, you have selected an optional paper that doesn't suit the bent of your mind and you have selected just because you don't have any other choice you opted that optional paper out of compulsion so the base strategy is to focus on a particular paper especially of 200 marks paper and try to achieve 160 170 and 180 this is generally the strategy this is generally the way by which people secure more marks the rest of the paper your target should be to 50 55 60 65 but in one paper of 200 marks are two papers each of 100 marks your target should be 170 180 and that's the only way by which you can get good marks and also secure your place in good growth so this is one way even position holders secure 40 marks in english composition uh, 40 marks 41 42 in essay but they opt one paper like accounting mathematics statistics and they get 180 185 170 sometimes luck also favors sometimes you don't know what's going to happen css is highly unpredictable exam and you don't know what would be the outcome even some people claim that they will um, make you ready for css exam in four four months they will teach you everything they will give you sample papers they, they will try to convince you that css is not an issue they are just doing because they are getting money from you they have to satisfy you in one or other way but thing is that even people who secure first position in css the people who uh, come in top 10 are people who get the choicest group don't know whether they will be able to qualify css or not no one is sure till the end until the result is declared and allocation is made i'm telling you one personal example from my life I have prepared many candidates and I have never charged any single penny from anybody. I have been going to a couple of academies uh, and I have been uh, providing consultation free of cost. Even I pay my own expenses of vehicle and other things um, for going to any academy. But I never get any money from anybody. In whole my life I have never worked for money. I have try to pay back to society because there were so many people in my life who supported me without getting any money and obviously they don't need my uh, thanks and appreciation but this is a rule of life this is quality of a good man this is what we as a humans must do is that to pay back to society some people do good to you it is now your turn to do good to others who need your support this is my philosophy of life that's why i am here that's i am uh, 
uh, giving time to YouTube to guide new aspirants, the people who lack resources, people who don't have guidance, people who are eager, willing, potential, but need support and guidance for getting through CSSA exam. This is simple thing. So, I am telling you example of my my life. I said there were there were two two students of mine. One of them had excellent English. I said very 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 commanding, natural, highly dignified language. And other candidate was average. His English was not that good as the English of other guy. But what happened? And the candidate whose English was not good was good at manipulation. He was able to create proper connections. He was able to communicate his thoughts clearly. Although his English was to a great extent below the level of English of other candidate. What happened? The guy who had got good English got failed and the guy who had average English not only passed but he was allocated to a good group and if you believe that his score was 700 plus, his uh, score in English composition and English essay was 40-41. So you should aim to pass some papers because you cannot always score in all the papers. Your target should be to pass some papers and uh, target some papers where you must score more. Say for example, this is always my favorite subject. I try to go through history every time. Whenever I get time, I read history. And history was one of my optionals. And in those times when uh, when I was doing CSS, there was trend that Indo-Pak history was being targeted because many candidates were opting Indo-Pak history in 2009, 8, 7. So my optional was Indo-Pak history and I had 140 8 score that was quite low that was quite below my expectation but uh, considering the history and the trend of paper it was uh, somehow highest at that time unfortunately the the guys who had adopted islamic history in 2009 some guys had islamic history and all the guys who had islamic history scored 180 85 195 would you believe out of 200 some candidates although very average very average student obtained 195 marks out of 200 and were allocated to good groups. So please believe, please believe in yourself and believe that CSS is unpredictable and you don't know whether you would be qualified, you would be able to qualify or not. The people who are claiming that they will prepare candidates in four months or five months or six months actually never knew that whether they would be able to qualify themselves or not. It is unpredictable. Make your preparation, but wait for the luck. Wait for the outcome. You cannot, you cannot judge. You cannot predict about CSS exam whether you would be able to qualify or not. Never, never. They, the people who say so are basically trying to cheat the candidates. They want to extract money out of their pockets. Nothing else. Nobody is sure. If you go to position holders go to anybody they might have invested a lot of time they might have worked but they were not sure whether you would be able to qualify or not even more well they were not sure whether they will take first position i am telling you one candidate one one of my friends uh, who was a man english was uh, king of history i must say that he had everything at his tips and he was in m english his english was also good he couldn't qualify css he couldn't even qualify any test to date. Sometimes luck doesn't support you. Sometimes you, you make tactical errors which uh, bring your downfall. And then I used to teach English to a guy. It's a famous case. I don't want to mention anybody's name. That guy, want, that guy used to teach English to a guy and he stood first. That is long ago in 2005-04. So this is the thing that must be taken into account before preparing for CSA. So my humble suggestion here is that we are discussing on a selection of optional papers. Some are very scoring as I gave you example of uh, Islamic history. Nobody knows that uh, it is going to be high scoring. Nobody knows that the next year it would be low scoring and all the candidates would be uh, either 
uh, getting failure or achieving high scores and similarly some people made ethical errors like they have done masters in English literature and they are optional paper. English literature is optional paper. English literature is never a scoring, never a scoring paper and it goes for assessment to an English professor who is miser, who is rigid, who is sadist, who is idealist who believes in perfection, he never is generous in scoring marks and ultimately your allocation, your exam, your life has to face lot of problems, lot of problems because if you don't pass, CSS is a kind of uh, craziness. CSS, I always say that only crazy people come here. Those who have idealized CSS since their childhood those people who have got inspiration, those people who believe in do or die, come for CSS. You cannot pass CSS if your brother asks you to go and uh, get preparation for CSS and pass it. Never. I have seen so many candidates, you will also see in your life so many candidates who were forced by their family members to go for CSS and ultimately they got big failures. CSS is a personal inspiration. You get from someone very close to you or from society, go to school, college or even on the way and you get inspired and go for CSS. Invest your time properly, think properly and select optional papers accordingly. Always keep in mind that there are certain turns, some, some optional papers are targeted some are yeah, deliberately low scoring, some are yeah, encouraging others to opt some paper, some paper are, are generously uh, awarded marks. Uh, these things should be kept in mind while selecting optional papers. So I believe that I have been able to communicate my message to you all with regard to selection of optional papers and uh, you must select papers keeping in view your educational background, trained and also your personal experiences. So guys, so as parents, young men, I believe that I have been able to communicate my message to you fully and if, if there is any ambiguity, if, you, if I have not been able to communicate my message in a clear way, you can contact me and ask any question. I believe that this talk of mine is going to help all the aspirants, all the uh, young lot uh, which lacks guidance, which has uh, no resources to go to academies, to pay money to teachers for preparation of CSS or PCS exams and please be serious and select optional papers very calculately. Please on optional papers your score depends on your selection on your decision everything depends and your family your friends everyone around you has a lot of hopes and expectations on you prove that you are not only a good decision maker but also a good planner css is all about good decision making and planning thank you very much and if you like my channel please go to youtube and subscribe virtual civil services academy by Zedi Langa and also share with all the aspirants who need support and guidance free of cost. Thank you, take care, bye.